Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. looks pretty ugly, doesn't it? When was the last time you saw a perfectly symmetrical pumpkin though? That's the cool thing about this project. You can have any squishy, weird shape you want. But you can see I'm, I'm oblong, I'm, I'm bumpy there. So this is a good spot. I wanna make sure I have enough lid, but I wanna have enough body to cut eyes in there. So I'm gonna mark that. So that's gonna work out good. I'll have eyes about here, nose here, mouth there, or something like that. The first one I did, the eyes came into the lid. And that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna take my parting tool. And we're gonna come in here, start making our first cut. I'm gonna go in about a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, something like that. Come back, make a very healthy, oh, excuse me, very healthy <laughs> uh, relief cut. Now, right here, I'm having to make a tenon that's gonna fit inside of the pumpkin. It's gonna be this part. You can see that right there? I've gotta have a tenon so when it sits in the lid, it doesn't flop, or it sits on top, it doesn't flop off. So I have to make a third cut to start cutting it out now. So this is my relief cut right there. And then this is my other cut. So you can see I've left a healthy lip there. So I'm gonna go in a ways. And this parting tool is pretty heavy duty so I can go in quite a ways. But again, like the bowl gouge, the narrower the, um, the diameter, the more I have to raise the handle. There's gonna be a point to where you're just gonna be scraping at that point, either lower the tool rest or switch over to a full saw to cut it off. And it doesn't have to be very pretty underneath. We can always sand that off later. But now I've got it down to a, ooh, about an inch. And I'm gonna call it good there. And I'm gonna pull this back and I'm gonna go over here and grab my pull saw. <laughs> I like it a lot. Oops, get that out of the way. I don't want to saw the tailstock. I mean the tool rest. Sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go pull this in. There we go. Now we got our lid. Now just like we did on the uh, tenon, I used my calipers to mark this inside diameter. And I've been testing and fitting for a little bit here. And I don't want a snug fit. I just want something that'll go on there and that's really nice. And it's easy to line up because I have <laughs> that uh, marking in the wood. It's uh, some spalting, it's really pretty. Move my light there a little bit. And um, bring my tail stock up here because now we're gonna need it to hold everything together. Come over here, boy. Come on. <laughs> Use two hands when you move things. It's a lot easier on you. There we go. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna bring this up, put that in place, bring this up, and we're just gonna pinch it. We're gonna make it hold it on. Now you can see by looking at this, let me move my light over here real quick, ah, that it is why I did the oblong shape now. You can see where I lost wood. So we're gonna shape this now, and we're gonna make the stem, get everything the way we want it, and then we're gonna start drawing some lines on it so we can start doing the carving part. That looks good. I'm actually gonna switch to my swept back big spindle gouge now just to give me a little more control on the shape. Turn this on, everything looks good. I can bring my speed up quite a bit. So don't think perfect shape, think pumpkin at this point. We want to make something interesting looking. Just don't take a lot of wood off here because you'll lose the lip. There we go. 
So we want to do our stem. Our stem should probably be about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch in diameter. And when we do the carving stage, that's when we're going to give it all the pretty shape and everything to make it look like a stem. We just want to bring the wood down to the size that it needs. So I'm just roughing it out. This is not pretty. We're just getting it out of the way. There we go, like that. Make it a little narrower. I can do a pull cut like so. That helps out a bit. And that looks about right. Do we do want to put a little bit of a curve into it? Because the stems have a little bit of shape like that. Okay, now let's go over here and start blending our shape a little bit. That looks good. We're going to just move this over just a little bit. This looks like a perfect ball right now, which actually doesn't make me that happy because I want it to look more pumpkin-like. So let's kind of sweep in at the bottom here, give it more of a fat bottom to sit on. There we go. And I'm just going to make a pass here just to get the pencil lines off. So now, that looks like a pumpkin to me. So, how do we make all these great shapes? Well, this is where the carving is going to come in. So we have to find a way to make lines that are symmetrical all the way around it so we can build the shape of the pumpkin. There, he's right side up. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, the way that happens is with an indexing jig. And Robust Lathe has an indexing system built in. You can see this little pin here. I'm going to move the camera a little bit then. And you can see these little holes right here. So when I screw that, this little point goes into the hole here. You can see over here nothing turns. So the first thing I do is I take a flat pencil, just put it on my tool rest and move across like so. So that's my first line, right? Well, after fooling around with this for a while, I found out that if I take this and move six holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, I get the width I need for the, um, I don't know, the ridges on the pumpkin? I don't know what you call it. But you can see now, let me undo this real quick. You see how it spaces out, so that's a nice fat ridge. So this will give me evenly spaced all the way across. You just have to make sure that you do even numbers. If you do odd, you mess up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And don't ask me how I know that. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the lines out on here, and then I'll show you how we start carving on this piece. It's gonna get dusty and dirty from here on out. Now, I'm old school. I don't carve. I actually carved one time in my life. I built my wife a carousel horse when we were dating. I had a scroll saw and a Dremel. That's all I know about this stuff. <laughs> so it took a long time. But I'm old fashioned. I still have my Dremel. But they've come out with some neat stuff in the last few years. This is a diamond cutting wheel right here. And catch this out. What I want to do is put an initial line in the wood that'll help me with the carving. Now this is going to get pretty dusty in a minute. I'm going to put on a dust mask. I do have my air filtration system running in the background. But what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to remove a chunk of wood and make like a V-shape here. And that'll give me a start to go to my favorite Dremel tool, which is my sanding discs. <laughs> now you only want to go probably about oh, a quarter of an inch deep in here. You don't want to go too deep because we still have to hollow this thing. And if you make it too deep, you're going to make it really thick on the sidewall, so when you cut the face, it's going to look odd. But anyway, I'm going to get this wood moved out here. I'll get one ready, and then I'll show you how we do the sanding disc. And then after that, you just do it over and over and over. And don't keep catching it on the wood. That's not a good thing. <laughs> One good side effect to all this dust is I feel like I have hair again. <laughs> been a while since anything's been on top of there. Ugh. Anyway, I am now going to put on my breathing protection because it's going to get really dusty because this is where I'm going back to my favorite tool and that's the Dremel sander. This is a 60 grit wheel. I'm going to turn this on and you can see how ugly this is. I've got my grooves in everywhere, right? They're all about the same depth, which is important. But now I'm simply going to take the sander and start working it back and forth. All I want to do is round out each one of these, I don't know what you call it, sections of the uh, pumpkin. So, and it's going to be rough. I want to leave the finish rough on it. Now, I can only work one side at a time. I have to switch to the other side to get this side. So I just rotate and go to this one. Now, one cool thing I found out while doing this was the rougher the better. Also, if you touch it and leave little burn marks like that, you can use the burn marks 
to make a really cool texture and look to your pumpkin. So it looks real. So anyway, I'm gonna eat some dust for a while and get this all rounded out. And now we gotta move on to a hollowing. That's the next step. You can see I've got the shape. Everything looks pretty good. It blends in well. Now we're gonna hollow. So I'm gonna bring my tool rest up here like so. Adjust my light a little bit. And Easy Wood Tools, this has gotta be my favorite tool now for hollowing. I gotta admit, I'm not selling this thing. I love it because it works. It's a little tiny carbide tip. And this cuts wood beautifully. And when you're hollowing, it's really nice. And they also add this little cool thing here, little bubble. So it reminds you to keep it level. You tilt it up, you're in the red zone, you get a catch. And I've tested that out a couple times. <laughs> so I'm gonna start this up, bring the speed up, and I wanna start in the center. This is perfectly on level, there's my bubble. So we're just gonna push in like so, and see how easily and quickly it removes wood. Come back and get this little tip right here. And what I wanna do is work my way down in stages to hollow this out. I want to leave the wall about a quarter inch thick where the curves, where those little uh, ridges meet, you know, these things. I want to be a quarter inch thick right here, not there. I want to be right in this area. So where it goes the deepest, I want to be a quarter inch thick. That is a lot easier to show than to explain. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to work on this, and once it's hauled out, we'll then drill holes for the eyes, nose and mouth, and make our pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. Lovely sound. You can see I have the face drawn on my pumpkin and it's now becoming the jack-o'-lantern. And you can obviously tell I am not an artist. <laughs> anyway, I'm drilling holes because I need access to get in there to shape the eye and the nose and the mouth a little easier. And I'm staying clear of my rim right there. Now, I went to one of those cheap discount places to buy a pneumatic powered saw blade because I'm gonna use this probably about three times in my whole life. I didn't wanna spend a lot of money on it. The other thing is we have a mascot in here and I don't know where he is right now and he's <laughs> there we go, flying around and it's a fly. And Brian and I were talking off camera and he said, fly, who named that? cro Magnum Man? Because if you follow that pattern, we should have been named Walk. But anyway, back to the project. I wanna take this tool, put it in here and I'm just gonna make the edges. <laughs> it's loud, but it cuts well if you put it in the hole. So anyway, I'm going to clean up the shapes on the eyes and stuff. And then all that's left to do is to part this off just like I did the lid earlier. And we'll make a couple, of, couple of little tweaks to it to clean it up a bit. And we'll be ready to light this one up. Okay, we're good. Missed him. <laughs> Hate flies. This is looking good now. Even though I can't carve or draw, that thing's pretty ugly, so I love it. <laughs> it's a neat little project. And you know, you could finish this. Uh, I might put polyurethane on it just to protect it, but I don't want to put a color on it. You could put orange, but I like the raw wood look because if you put orange on it, it would just look like any other pumpkin out there. Now, you can get these little LED tea lights to put in there. Obviously, you don't want a candle. Uh, I have uh, some friends in the medical industry and they gave me this light. You don't want to know where that's been. But anyway, uh, it will light it up very nicely. So, there's our finished pumpkin. It's now a jack-o'-lantern. So, until next time, keep turning. <laughs>
Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.